Good morning, everybody. Hey, we're going to go ahead and go outside and pray. So, guys, if y'all want to gather on up out front, we're going to go out here and pray. Ladies, if y'all have any prayer requests, I'll be right up here. Just wave your hand, and I'll come get them. All right, Dave's telling me i got to test the mic, so i got to talk for just a second. Good? Okay. Now I got to do a second test, so I'm just going to stand here real awkward.
morning everybody we're glad to see everybody here this morning we've got a few out of the worship team that's sick this morning that couldn't be with us we're praying for them praying for michael this morning he's preaching down at three trees this morning hope they get a good blessing from him this morning uh if you would stand with us we're going to start out on page 46 he set me free
he did. All right, we're going to turn to page 31. If I can find it. Whitney's going to lead us in this one. It's uh, what a day that will be. All right, Chance, we're going to do announcements. All right, we can do that. <laughs> cool. Hey, guys, go ahead and have a seat real quick. Uh, man. Hey, look, it, I have had a lot of phone calls this week. I want you to know that uh, there's a lot of folks in our church that are uh, sick. They are. Uh, they may just have allergies, but they don't want to freak everybody out, which is what we've asked people to do is uh, use some uh, self-responsibility. And so we've got several families that are out this week. We prayed for them outside. I'm going to ask you guys to be praying for them as well. Uh, Jake is out too. So is Greg. Same thing. Uh, just at home, woke up sore throats and everything else and said, hey, look, uh, we're going to do what you said. So I'm proud of them for doing that. And I'm going to ask you guys to keep up that uh, that just that mindset. Guys, I want you to be here. I want you to be smart about who you are and what you do as well, okay? So uh, proud of you all for doing that. Guys, we've got a lot of food back there. I hope you all are hungry. So after your service, we're going to have potluck, and uh, it's going to be a good time and fellowship, and we're going to enjoy it. And uh, guess what? Last night... Right. That was Halloween. Yeah. Last night was Halloween. Sorry, it's running together now. We had <laughs> we had Harvest Fest up here at the square. I want you to know they gave out, what, a thousand bags? Just shy of a thousand bags of candy to kids and had uh, service times and messages in it. So, uh, guys, that's that was an awesome ministry. Uh, we, we There was a bunch of kids having a blast, okay? Other than my kid, uh, Wayne scared him a little bit. Wayne wasn't even wearing a mask, and he scared him. But <laughs> it, it's all good. Angie and crew, and there's a whole bunch of them that... 
put candy together. I started to try to name them, but every time I talked to somebody else, they were up here helping bag candy. So everybody came up and helped with that. Thank y'all so much. You know, it takes all types. Um, I'm just proud of those guys. A lot of extra work went into that. And uh, so, hey, look, Wednesday night, still doing Bible study, 6.30 potluck, 7 o'clock to starting a Bible study. Uh, and if you have your baby bottles, you can put them over here. And uh, also don't forget to get those Christmas... Uh, uh, I went blank. The Christmas boxes. Yeah, yep, the Christmas boxes and get them filled up. Guys, a lot going on this winter. I want you to know I love you guys. And uh, I'm, I'm going to share one thing with you about the building real quick. And uh, don't freak out on me. This is I got a message to get this message to you, okay? We are uh, working on getting the building dry. Y'all know weather holds a lot of this stuff up. We got to get all that set up so nothing slowed down. But I do want you to know, when we came to y'all in January... Okay, uh, we had an average tithe of about eight thousand a month. Okay, it's kind of what we based our budget off of. The last three months have been about, or it's actually eighty five hundred. The last three months have been about seven thousand. So we're about fifteen hundred a month down. And if you look back in the summer, it was worse than that. Guys, COVID has changed a lot of look the way we look. But you know what? I think God does it for a purpose. He has extended this out because, you know what, if we'd have finished this project when we first thought we were, we'd have been right in the middle of this thing, and we would have had a hard time trying to finish it and pay for it, okay? So God has, has putting this all together in the right way, but I do want to let you guys be aware of that because it's going to put a lot on us to finish it out ourselves, okay, which we were going to do anyway, but it comes a lot on us. So I want you guys to be aware of that. I'm not up here standing up here begging, but I am going to stand up here and tell you we're going to put it in the dry, and depending on how the next two or three months go on giving and everything else, is going to depend on how much we can immediately start knocking out inside that building. Okay, guys? Not being a messenger of bad news. I'm just letting you know where we stand. Sound good? All right, somebody's got to do it, and I got chosen. So let y'all know, hey, look, God's got a plan, and I have faith in that. And here's the reason I say that is because, like I said, we'd finish this thing in the middle of the summer. We'd have had a hard time paying for everything to finish out. God has had a plan through this. He's gotten us through this so far. He's going to keep doing it, okay? I am uh, proud to be y'all's pastor. I'm proud of all the different talents he's brought from construction talents to arena talents to doing parades and floats and, and harvest fests and everything else. And you know what? That's a blessing from God, and I'm happy about it. So, guys, why don't y'all stand up? Let's worship together, celebrate God for who he is, and I'm going to challenge these men to sing louder than everybody else in their family. All right? It don't matter how you sound. Don't worry. I'm turning Lester up so he's louder than y'all. Y'all just sing as loud as you can. Hey, let's worship, Lester. All right, brother. All right. Turn to page 10 in the book. Just over in the glory land.
job. All right, this song I'm going to sing here, I was asked to sing by Mr. Bill Lowry. He's not here today, but I know he's watching. He said it was one of his favorite songs, and it's one of mine, too. It's called In the Garden. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity just to be in your house, Lord. Lord, we ask you now that as chance comes up to give you word, that, Lord, that if there's anyone here, Lord, that doesn't know you as their Savior, that, Lord, they, you speak to their heart this morning, Lord. Maybe something they, maybe something he says, maybe something we've sang, whatever it may be. Just put something on their heart, Lord, to turn their life over to you. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, y'all are dismissed. Okay, they're all staying inside this week. All right, good. Hey, I tell you what, sometimes them old songs like that, he started singing that in the garden, and 
Man, I couldn't do nothing but think of my grandma. Any of y'all have songs like that, old hymns that makes you think of family? Uh, my grandma would sing that. It seemed like every time I ever, she'd start singing that or Amazing Grace, one or the other. And boy, it, it just makes you feel warm all over. I don't, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but sometimes them old hymnals sure do. Um, hey, we're going to be in Ecclesiastes 3 this morning. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, we'll be starting in verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, if if uh, you're having trouble finding that, that'll be up there in the Old Testament. We're going to start out there. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I've had it on my heart lately. And uh, here kind of between uh, ending Acts and going into Christmas and everything, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we just get way too fast in life. And uh, so we're going to do a few Sundays here, and we're going to talk about slowing down. Uh, and, and it's going. we're going to call this series, you can call it whatever you want. You'll hear me say it a lot because I want you to think about this through the holidays. But just slow down, cowboy. And, uh, and, and I want you to listen to me about this because I, I really feel that the hustle and bustle of life is causing us as a nation and as a church home and family a lot of, tr- a lot, a lot of trouble. And, and we need to understand what God says about getting too busy, about getting too caught up in the hustle and bustle, especially right now with the holidays. Anybody ever feel like you look forward to November and December uh, just all year round, but then by about right at the, the day after Christmas, you're just ready to take a really long nap? Like it's just been too much. You've made all the trips to the in-laws. You've made all the trips to the aunts and uncles that invited you over. You've done the the present deal. You've done the Thanksgiving get-togethers, and you're just tired. Anybody else ever feel that way? Okay, good. I want to make sure I'm in the same boat with y'all, okay? Because I do. And I and I tell you what, it's it. Uh, life has gotten that way all year round. And I don't know if it's because of technology or transportation, but it seems like we all have all these things going on at one time. It's like we're multitasking year-round. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't think that's good. I don't think it's good for any of us. I think that's probably part of the reason that a lot of people, when you talk to them about how you need to slow down and give God some quality time and read your Bible and think about Jesus and your relationship with Him, that a lot of us just... Yeah, I'm going to do that. And that's the last time you ever think about it because there's not a hole in our schedule anywhere. I mean, let me share with you. Here's my schedule for the last week. And I'm not looking for sympathy. I think we're all in the same boat. But uh, Monday night we had a dinner uh, with some friends of ours that we talked about some church stuff. Uh, Tuesday evening I had a a meeting, took off early, had to go talk to the the construction and the uh, plumbing and the electrical about some changes we had to make. Don't worry, nothing major, just some things to hiccup. We got it straightened out. Had to make some changes up there. Wednesday night we had church. Thursday night I got home all this time. I mean, I got home Thursday night, 9, 30, 10 after football game with one of my kids. Uh, most weeks I've got one on Tuesday and Thursday. Friday night I got home and uh, my wife, uh, you know, she was kind of tired of the kids all week long so she decided to go vote and I'm going to tell y'all, them lines at the voting must have been long because it took her a while. <laughs> if anybody else had to go vote in Cross County, I just, y'all, y'all, y'all be careful going up here. It took her a few hours to get that voting job done. I don't know. I didn't think the decisions were that hard but either way. So anyway, we you know we got uh, she had to go vote, and that's been our week. We had Harvest Fest yesterday and Halloween. It's just been, whoo, it's been a week. But you guys know that there's weeks like that when you are a parent and you are uh, involved in church and you're involved in your community. Those weeks happen. But I'm gonna tell you something. I don't think it's good, and I don't think God ever intended that for us. And, and, you know, I'm going to take you back for just a second. This is Cowboy Church. We're going back up into the 1800s, and I want you to think about a few things. How much simpler life was. We've hit on this before, but the next few weeks we're going to spend some time on this. I think it's time that we repair our families, repair our own lives, repair ourselves spiritually, and slow down and realize the things that are most important. And we're going to talk about slowing down and enjoying life today. Next few weeks, we're going to talk about it slowing down, enjoying our families, being thankful for our blessings and our jobs, and, and what all that means for us, okay? And when we back up, we look at, let's just say back in the 1800s, look at how much simpler life was. A trip to Jonesboro was an all-day event to get there from here. Think about that, Okay? All day event to get there. You, you plan things out. Uh, a, a dinner wasn't a one-hour event at your house, and that's from start to finish. 
Think about that. I was watching Gunsmoke the other day. Me and my wife watching that. I don't know. Anybody else watch Gunsmoke when you lay down? Yeah. Okay. That's us. Gunsmoke's like that going to sleep show. Like it's good, it's solid, but there's nothing real exciting to happen, so you don't have to wake back up to watch it. So I love Gunsmoke. Here they, they sat down and ate fried chicken, vegetables, uh, mashed potatoes, and gravy, and a pie. And I was like, man. Oh, Matt knew how to get it going on, you know. He had it going good for him. But then I was like, yeah, Ashley, you realize how much work that was back then? I mean, there wasn't no, hey, let's throw that chicken in the microwave and thaw it out. No, he had to go catch that chicken. You had to clean that chicken. You had to, you had to get that thing ready and all, all ready to cook. You had to do that while the cooking stove's getting warmed up with the wood fire over there. Some of these ladies are like, what are you talking about, 1800s? I went through that, boy. What are you talking about? The cooking stove's getting warmed up over there. And then, and then in between all that, you're trying to shuck peas and everything else and get those ready. And, and you're trying to dig around, find them potatoes, and you got to get them all smashed up by hand, by the way. And all of this is going on. I mean, you had to start a dinner like that at lunch. You ate lunch and you were going, all right, time to get started on dinner. <laughs> Guys, things slow down. And you may be like, well, that's a lot of hard work. Yeah, it was. But I don't know if it wasn't better. Taking our cows to a sale. Think about this. Nowadays, what do we do? Load them suckers up, go to the sale, and be back before dark. Back then, it took weeks, if not months, to get them to the sale. Get them to the railhead. I mean, just, just little things like that. Kids' toys were valued more. Why? They were made by hand. Like, you, did, you, you didn't just have an endless supply in the closet that the kids have forgot about. They had toys that were made by hand. It took longer to make them. They valued them more. Uh, going to church, uh, just the, the, the time it took, it was an all-day event. A lot of times you had to ride to church, you took a lunch, and you, everybody picnicked together, and then you started back home. Why? Because it may take an hour ride to get to church. It might take time, and so you valued that time at church more. You valued the time to see folks and visit with them, and guess what? That's another thing. The lost art of conversation. You realize, like, our world is based on text messages and emojis right now, right? And I just learned how to say emojis. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> so here's the trick with that. We've lost the art of, of, of spending time with people, valuing time with family, valuing what it means to sit with your parents and the time that you have with them. We've lost the art of seeing our neighbors and leaning on each other because they're the closest thing to help you'll ever have. Guys, I think we've sped up too much. And I don't think God intended that. Yeah, it was hard work, but we cherished things more. We cherished our possessions more. You want to know why? Because you worked harder to get them. The things you had, you couldn't replace. Right now, you crash your car, what do you do? Get some insurance on it, go get you a new one. Guess what happened if you crashed your wagon? You may have to wait weeks on it or you had to build another one with what you had left. Guys, we have lost the appreciation for life that I think God intended for us to have. So what does the Bible say about that? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 13. Let me read this to you. Verse 1. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. Even you Baptists. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Verse 9, what gain has the worker from his toil? I've seen the businesses that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. 
He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them to than be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Now, I want you to look at something. Look at how simple this is. You don't see there's a time to have three businesses. You don't see there's a time to, to multitask uh, your life away to where you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You don't see any of this. It's simple. It's straightforward. I think God intended that. And here's the thing. The first verse, verse 1, explains exactly what the rest of it means. He said, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. Let me tell you something. Here's what he's meaning by that. It's time to slow down, folks, and realize that you don't have to do it all at one time. you got one life to live, and that's to enjoy that life. And you know, you say, well, well, shouldn't you say be a servant of God? Yes. We're going to get to that. That is part of enjoying life. But here's the thing. He says it right there. He says, there is, for everything, there is a season. Meaning, guys, I'm going to tell you something. You parents that are raising kids right now, you got one shot at it. You got a season to raise your child. And before you know it, go ask some of these folks with grayer hair than mine. What are you, you talking about my hair? You got, oh, you're, okay, okay, good. Kind of offended me. It's all good. It's all good. Here's the thing. You go ask these folks with gray hair, and they're going to tell you those kids are going to grow up in a blink of an eye. And that season's over. You, you, you're not going to get it back. You, talk, you look at this list of things, and it says a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, a time to seek, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away. There's a time for everything. And sometimes we're so worried about the future that we forget to live right now. I'm going to tell you something right now. You can be living for your retirement. And you can be putting everything you can back for your retirement. You're taking two jobs so you can retire one day. But guess what? What is it worth to have retirement, to live in luxury at the end of your life, if you never had a moment with your children? If you have a wife that leaves you because you never spent time with her, or a husband that leaves because he never saw you? What is it worth to spend retirement luxury if you never had the life in the first place? I think God's telling us, slow down, cowboy, and enjoy life. So here's the thing. There's simple parts of life right there. Every step there is very simple. You know, I've had people tell me before they, they lose somebody in their life, and, and, and I'll, I'll go to the family and be talking to them, and I'll tell them, and say, look, it's okay. Like, take a little time. Just mourn. You know, have faith in where your, your spouse is or your child is, but it's okay to be sad. And they'll go, well, I just, I just ain't got time for it. I got to get this done. I got to get that done. No, you don't. Sometimes you just got to stop. Sometimes you got to stop and be a man and be a woman. Sometimes you got to stop and just be human. And let God take care of the rest. You know, verse, uh, verse 12 he says, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and do good as long as they live. What he's talking about is keeping it simple. See, it says in the verses before that, that God didn't give us the knowledge to understand the cosmos, so to speak. He didn't give us the knowledge to understand why he does certain things, why people die, why people are born, why people move away. He didn't give us the knowledge to understand why the stars are the way they are. Sometimes we just got to sit back and just take it for granted that God's got it because he says he does. And you know what? Be happy for what we do have and the gifts that he has given us. See, we get so busy trying to be Superman. We get so busy trying to have an 80-hour work week for our retirement. We get so busy trying to fill the bank account to have $100,000 in it because that's our goal. We get so busy trying to run multiple businesses. We get so busy trying to do all of these different things that we forget that we just need to slow down 
and enjoy life. You know, that's first John says this. First John two seventeen. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now what's that saying? It's saying the world, everything that we're chasing in this world, that title, that bank account, that escalade, those that new truck, those fancy clothes. Guess what? It's all gonna pass away. You don't believe me? No offense to anybody when I say this, but I think I need to share this. You know it's going to be good if i got to say that on the front end. But I want you to take a look around you. You're going to see young people who are in the stylish dress, the best clothes. You're going to see some wise people who have lived life who are in the same fashion they were 30 years ago because they realized there are things that are more important than their clothes and their style. That's wisdom. Why don't you reflect on that a minute? They've learned how to slow down. But I'm going to guarantee you that every person in here who has been forced to slow down due to age, they would tell you they wish they had slowed down 50 years ago and enjoyed life. Amen? Guys, God is telling us, slow down, cowboy, enjoy life. He says in verse 13, also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. That is God's gift to man. You know what he's saying right there? He's saying, he's saying, enjoy the gifts I've given you. Enjoy the gifts I've given you. Now, it, it, here's the thing. Here's what we do. We chase life so hard. Now, you think about this, and you, some of you are going to step back on me just a little bit. We chase life so hard because we want what everybody else has. Isn't it? Everything we do is focused on being like somebody else. Instead of being just blessed by the gifts God has given us, what do we say? Man, I wish I had a truck like him. Man, I wish I had a cowboy hat like that guy. Man, I wish I had a horse like him. Woo! Man, I, I, wish, I wish I had a family like him or her. Boy, I wish I had a spouse that looked like that. But you know what? God has given us gifts and the gifts that we needed right then. And we're so worried and stressed over getting what everybody else has that we forget to slow down and enjoy what God has blessed us with. So we go into these holidays, guys. It's like a competition. It's going to be like a competition. And you say, no, it's not. Really? How many of y'all got split homes? You got kids that go to multiple homes. Guess what? I'm there. I got my hand up. Guess what it becomes a competition of? Who's going to get the best present for the kids? How many, how many of y'all have got, got sisters and, and brothers and, and, uh, and different family groups that do, a different, do the Christmas dinner every year? Y'all go to a different play, house every year? Guess what it turns into? A competition. Man, I'm going to do a bigger dinner than we had last year. Sister ain't out doing me this time. You say it's not, but guess what? It is. It ain't because there's more people. You just do it because you're trying to put on a bigger and better show. You know what the problem is? You got to slow down, cowboy, and enjoy life. You got to slow down and enjoy life. Here's Ecclesiastes 4. Just flip on over a page. I'm going to read this to you. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 4 through 8. Ecclesiastes 4, 4 through 8. The Bible hits the nail on the head right here. Verse 4. Then I saw that all toil... And all skill and work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. I want to read some more. Let's think about that. What, what, is it, what does that mean? All work and all skill of work come from jealousy of somebody else. You say, well, what do you mean? We're not supposed to be skillful at our job? No, you're supposed to do a good job. The Bible talks about that. But here's what motivates most of us to be better at our jobs, to be better at who we are, because we're trying to be better than the one down the road. 
We want to have the best skill out of everybody in our, in our, our, our job, our vocation, our occupation. Why, why is that? What, because why? We want people to think highly of us. And you know what? That's a driving motiv- uh, motivation. But the problem with that is we get so focused on being the best cowboy, the best roper, the best healer, the best farmer, the best so-and-so, the best this, that we forget to stop and enjoy the life that God has given us because we're thinking 10 years ahead. Slow down. Slow down, cowboy. Enjoy life. God has given you blessings right there in front of you. Quit chasing dreams and live the life he has given you. Is it okay to have dreams? It is. But don't get so caught up in your dream that you don't live and love what is beside you. He said this is also his vanity and striving after wind. What's that mean? It means it's useless. Any of y'all ever tried to chase the wind? Why not? You can't catch it. Let me tell you something. A man told me one time, a long time ago. He said, son, you can be the best fighter. You can be the best sport athlete you ever want to be. Guess what? There's always going to be somebody else that's better. I don't care how much you chase that wind. It's always going to be faster than you. It's useless. Be good at what you do. Take pride in your work. But don't do it because you want to be better than everybody else. Because guess what? You're never going to get there. By the time you become the best, guess what's going to happen? There's somebody younger, nimbler, and stronger that's going to be there to outdo you. It's the cycle of life. And now you done spent your whole life chasing a dream that gets outdone in the end. Verse 5, he said, the fool folds his hands and eats his own flesh. God's saying, don't be lazy. He's saying, don't look. I want you to be skillful, but I'm not telling you to be lazy. I'm not telling you to fold your hands and get fat off just being lazy. He says, you eat your own hands because you ain't going to work for a living. God's never said, be lazy. But he's also said, have the right purpose in mind. He said, verse 6, better is a handful of quietness than two handfuls full of toil and a striving after the wind. Better is a handful of quietness than two handfuls of toil and striving after wind. Think about that just a minute. When was the last time you just sat down and enjoyed, just enjoyed time with your family? I'm serious. Not watching a movie, not hollering because the kids are hollering. Not trying to do, get ready for Monday. Not filling out paperwork for a bank loan. Just sat down and enjoyed your family. God says that that right there, a handful of quietness, meaning he's saying slow down, is better than two handfuls of toil and striving after wind. When was the last time you slowed down and just enjoyed life? The last time. Because I'm going to tell you something. Down there in verse 7, if you wanted to go ahead and read it, it says, Again, I saw vanity under the sun, one person who has no other, either son or brother, yet there is no end to all his toil. And his eyes are never satisfied with riches, so that he never asks, For whom am I working? I'm going to tell you something. You start chasing that buckle. In life, you start chasing that promotion. You start chasing being the having the biggest house, having the biggest, the best clothes, or anything else. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to figure out one day how useless that time was spent. You're going to figure out how unimportant it really was. And some of you are sitting there right now, and you're saying, "Look, I know you said that me striving for it is the is is because I'm jealous of my neighbor. I'm not like that. We we got to have this place. We got to have this. Really? All right, let me ask you a couple questions. Look upon look in your heart right now. How many of you actually needed the bigger house that you have today? I know a man who grew up in a two room dirt floor house with thirteen brothers and sisters. How many of you actually need the house you have today? How many of you actually needed that horse trailer with a slide out? 
touching nerves now, Cowboy Church. Oh, there, let me let me touch another one. How many of you actually needed that jewelry you're wearing? Or the clothes you just bought? Why did you go buy them? Because they were fashion. They're fashionable. You don't understand. Everybody's doing it. That means you're trying to be like everybody else. Just because everybody does something doesn't mean you have to be like them. The clothes you're wearing, if you bought them because they look nice and they're fashionable and they're, all the people you look up to wear them, guess what? That means you're trying to be like them. It all goes back to your priorities in life. Proverbs 23, 4 says, Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. Let me put that in our words. Don't work your whole life away to be rich. Be wise enough to know when to stop. Now everybody's kind of kind of sober at the moment. Y'all are y'all are pretty quiet. Let me tell you something about this. Sometimes the wisest person you know isn't the richest person. Sometimes the wisest person you may know in your life was the person who realized they had enough and they knew when to stop. The happiest people I know are comfortable. They're not lavish. They don't drive the best vehicles. I know some old boys that, I'm going to tell you right now, they could have the newest Duramax diesel GMC Denali pickup if they wanted to buy it and go pay cash for it. You know what they're driving around? Late 90s model pickup. It runs. Gets them to point A to point B. And you know what I'm going to tell you about that? They're some of the happiest people I know. Because they quit chasing the riches. They quit chasing the next vehicle. They quit chasing the next house. And they just slowed down and realized it was time to stop and enjoy life. Folks, I'm not telling you to be lazy. But what I am telling you is this. Slow down, cowboy, and enjoy life. God never intended for you to work yourself to death. And every one of us knows somebody who's done it. God never intended for you to run yourself ragged to the point that your body falls apart. He never intended for you to do that. He wanted you to do enough to be comfortable, to serve him. You know, those verses we first read in Ecclesiastes, what did they say? They said in verse 12, it says, I perceive there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. You know what doing good is when it's said in the Bible? Doing the Lord's work. Doing the Lord's work. God says that you are to enjoy life, to be happy, and to do good. Do the Lord's work. That's all he asks of you. He says there's a time for everything else. They're all listed there. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence. A time to speak and a time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. If you're living for God you're going to realize that life is pretty simple when you look at the Bible. Man is the one who's complicated life. We have complicated our lives and our families. And if you want to be a person who is happy and at peace with God, the first thing you've got to realize is how to slow down and enjoy life. And realize that just because the world says you need it, just because the Joneses down the road have got it, no offense if there's any Joneses in here, just because the Joneses down the road have it, that doesn't mean you're supposed to. Be happy with the blessings God has given you, the gifts that he has given you, and slow down and enjoy life some. Because God doesn't promise to us tomorrow. And he tells us, guess what? There's enough worries for today not to be anxious for tomorrow. I want to encourage y'all to slow down. Enjoy life. Enjoy life and the blessings God has given you. Here's the last thing I'm going to leave you with. To do this, you got to have a purpose in life. What is yours? What is your purpose for living life? 
Seriously, if you can't think of your purpose for living life, I want to suggest you go home and write it down. You think about it until you can write it down. What is your purpose in life? Because you can live a life and have a good life. And if you have never given your life to God and your purpose in life isn't to serve Him, and your purpose in life isn't to do good works on His behalf and in His name in order to lift people up and lead them to the Lord, then you're never going to experience this peace and this happiness we just talked about. What is your purpose in life? It all starts by giving your life to the Lord. So there's a lot of people who are going to tell you that you've got to work hard to get where you need to be so that you can be ready for God. And you can't. You'll never be there. A lot of people are going to tell you that if you do a good job and you, you have good works your whole life, that you'll spend eternity in heaven and you'll be happy then. Not going to be there. It's only the ones who have given their life to Jesus Christ who understand He died on a cross for their sins. He took the punishment that you deserve. They're going to really have a true purpose in life. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to think about where your purpose in life is. And has your purpose started with salvation? I truly mean it. Has your purpose in life started? Because it should start with salvation. You want to live a simpler life, a life that you find happiness and joy in the simple things in life? That starts when you give your life to the Lord and you realize that you only are here to serve Him. All the rest of it is just a symptom of that. Raising your family, godly children, being the partner to your wife that God's called you to be, all begins again when you give your life to the Lord. So today, if you've sitting here and you've realized that you've been chasing things in life that are not of God, if you realize that you've been chasing all these different goals in life and, and you have never slowed down and enjoyed life because you've never understood that God wanted you to, I want to ask you right now that you just slow down and you stop and give your life to the Lord. And you do it just like this, a conversation with God. And all you got to do is say, God, God, I love you. I want to have a life that is meant to serve you. A simpler life, Lord. And I want to ask you right now that you'd forgive me of my sins so I can start anew. And Lord, I do believe your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I believe he arose three days later. And I believe he's in heaven right beside you. God, will you forgive me and save my soul so I can spend an eternity in heaven with you? And if you had that conversation right there, and you believed it in your heart. Guess what? You have started a trip that will be much simpler and actually give you some enjoyment in life with what God has blessed you with right now. So I want to ask you right now if you did that. Everybody's heads bowed, every eyes closed. Nobody else is looking up. If you gave your life to the Lord today, I want to ask that you'd look up and just let me know. Because I want to show you in the Bible what you're supposed to do next and what really is important to God. God, as we uh, we sit here in just a moment of of silence and we we think about you and focus on you, I want to ask, Lord, that you would just help us to open our hearts and minds to the things that you truly want us to do in life. I pray, Lord, that as we start a busy season of holidays and celebrations, I pray, Lord, that you would just show us what's important. How to prioritize life. That it's okay if we don't get to every dinner. That we don't get to every event. That we would just put forward the first things first, and that is enjoying life with our family. Worshiping you with our family. Serving you as men and women. God, I pray that you slow us down a little bit and that we would cherish all the gifts that you've given us throughout our life. Sometimes, Lord, it's not all about the chase. Sometimes it's just about sitting still and thanking you for what you've done. God, as we get ready to go back here to eat and to fellowship together, 
thank you for all the hands who have blessed this food and brought it. And I want to thank you, Lord, for all the folks that are here today as you watch over our families and allow us to just grow stronger knowing that we have a church family who loves you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Mr. Jim, you ready back there? You stay ready. All right. I tell you what. I think we're fixing to get ready to eat. If y'all, y'all, y'all sure? Y'all still taking stuff off? All right. We're gonna get ready to eat. So how about this? Y'all just line up right down this wall right here. Start on that side down there by Miss Tanya in the door.